Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are happy to so see the second month of this year going to an end, shout a big hallelujah. You believe God for a glorious and more mighty things to be done in your life, shout a big hallelujah. You believe that this month, truly, your prayer will be answered for God as you are the month of prayer. Shout the biggest hallelujah in the house. Now I won't require to sing this song for me. Um, that's the song. Um, let me hear the song. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see. receive your word, the entrance of your word ah, causes light and understanding to the simple. Bring the light and understanding to the simple. As I receive your word, let me see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Let your word find expression in me. Thank you, faithful Father. Jesus, precious name, we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, God, for another moment. To connect to the throne of grace. Even as we prepare our mind to listen to your word. Let our mind be open to your word. And locate us. And transformation that will lift us to the height you have proposed that we will reach in life. Thank you, faithful father. Jesus, precious name, we pray. May you be seated. Um, thank you, for the choir. May you continue to magnify yourself in your life. Uh, two Sundays ago, said, can I have my message that we titled The Role of Prayer in Effective Avesting. The role of prayer in effective avesting. And we were able to lay certain foundation for that one. Now we go to the foundational te uh, uh, study test that is in James chapter 5. We read it again as we continue. Uh, started two weeks ago. Last week was the day they, we, we, we had the, what do you call it? That was the program, the Valentine. Valentine program. So that interrupted it. Now, James chapter 5 from verse 13. 
Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone... Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Now, when you look at what James wrote here by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you will discover that it was telling us that prayer is like what uh, the Yoruba people call bongbonche, that like for all the problems that there is a particular tablet that can handle those problems. And you see that it was talking about prayer. Now, I looked at some things he was saying here. He said, if anyone is sick, he said, or anyone is suffering, you know, suffering of any kind, the solution is let him pray. Now, he said, if anyone is sick, he said, come to the elders and let them pray for him. Now, that one now began to suggest to me that it's assumed that every elder in the church is a prayer elder. And um, if you are in a church where the elders are not praying, you know you are in a dangerous place. Because God has told you that when you are sick, you go to the elders. And if you go to the elders that are not praying, I don't know who will be able to help you. Because he said those elders will pray. I believe the elders that are not praying, they are not in this church. I believe that every elder in this church, they are praying elders. But peradventure, we have elders that are not praying. Today, as they hear the word of God, that fire of prayer we catch you. We come upon you in the name of Jesus. Now, you will now discover that even it was not only elder that they said they can pray, that can pray. Now, look at verse 16. It said, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So, peradventure, you have elders that are not praying. Do you know that if you are praying, you can pray for yourself. And that healing that you will get also from when elders pray upon you, you can get it. Now, and it was now moving forward. He said, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man are very smart. That every righteous man that prays, there is power in their prayer. Who is a righteous man? A righteous man is somebody that has been justified by the blood of Jesus. You have saved Jesus Christ of, uh, 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 as your Lord and Savior. And that blood is just justified. He said your prayer. The devil is afraid of your prayer. You know, those witches and wizards we are afraid of. They are afraid of your prayer. And that's why they want to put fear in your heart so that you won't be able to pray. When they put fear in your heart, it will make you not to have faith even in the prayer you are making. And they know that because God hears your prayer. Because this, the Bible said, it said the effective, fervent, now, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And it now told about somebody, Elijah, that we wrote, uh, read about. 
a great man of, of power. And he demonstrated power through prayer. He said he was like a man like a nature, with a nature like us. That the, how, you saw you, Elijah so big. He just is just like you and me. And somebody will be wondering, how can Elijah be like me or like you? But that's how he was. Do you know that he was a man that was able to confront 450 prophet of Baals? And he was able to destroy all of them. Then one woman issued him a threat that was going to kill him because of what he did. And he was afraid. He started running away. To the extent that when even God was talking, to, when, he, when he got to a place where he was hiding, he told God, he said, I'm not better than my fathers. I can't, I'm, you know, f- there is a flesh dimension that came in. Look at the awesome anointing he was crying, uh, carrying. That 24, uh, f- uh, f- over 450, I think 450 prophets of Baals, people that were, that were kind of spiritual people of those days. He was able, one man, Elijah, was able to confront them. But one woman put fear in him. And, you know, he responded to the flesh. Instead of responding to the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the spirit of God in him, this was somebody who was able to pray and stop rain for three and a half years. And he was able to pray and cause rain to come. He was afraid. So that means he was having the kind of nature, human nature we have. But that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about the, the power of those prayers. Now, today, because we are in a year where the theme is effective harvesting, and the Bible tells us in um, the Matthew chapter 9 that we read, when we read from verse 35 about what, when Jesus was talking to his disciples about the laborers being few, you will see, let, let, let's read that please. Ma- Matthew 9, and um, I will just read from verse, um, I will just read verse uh, 37 and 38. He said, then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. He said, there is great harvest, but the constraint is that laborers are few. And if laborers are few, the harvest will be wasted, waste away, and then it will cause a loss to the kingdom. But the solution is pray to the Lord who have harvest so that he can send harvest to his laborer. Now, what it means is that even in this um, Ebutemeta area, the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers that are supposed to bring the harvest, they are very few. But the solution is that we should pray. Now, at times, this harvest, this um, problems will come not because the laborers don't really want to come. But at times, there may be forces tying down laborers. There may be forces weakening laborers, even in-house. But what the Bible says is pray that the Lord will send laborers. Lord will raise laborers in his mind. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. The Bible says, for a great and effective door has opened to me, but there are many adversaries. So, the work God has called us to do, because of the effect that is going to have on the, uh, uh, the kingdom of Satan, it's going to cause massive destruction. That's why they will raise opposition. But we pray by the power that's in the name of Jesus, whatever opposition is raised in the cause of doing this work, we pray that our God of heaven will destroy those opposition in Jesus' name. Now, and that's why I want to just touch some places in respect of this prayer and to build on what we did last, and that time, we, the last time we had it. Prayer is an expression of commitment and trust we have in God. Prayer is an expression of commitment and trust we have in God. 
You know, when we come before God in prayer, we give him full control of our situation. Whenever you come before God and you start praying, what you are saying is that this situation, I cannot handle it. Come and take full control. You, if you trust God in everything, you will be talking to him about everything. If you trust God concerning everything about your life, you will be talking to him about everything. You know, if you have a friend that you trust, you will see that he won't be asking you questions. You just talk, start talking to him about new things you want to do, about what, you, the, what happened to you last night. That's how it is with prayer. If you develop a life of trusting God, in fact, whenever you see that your old friend, you say, hey, God, you see, something happened to me in the office yesterday, and then you'll be talking, he did not ask you a question. That's how it is. When you have this prayer life, you, you just want to talk to God. You just want to talk to him. You want to talk to him about everything and anything. And when you involve him in everything you do, you will see his hand in everything you do. That everything you are doing now, you are involving God. I want to buy a food, you involve God. I want to travel, you involve God. I want to choose a life partner, you involve God. I want to know the, the, my direction in life. You are involving God in everything you do. You'll be seeing his hand in everything you do. Now, when you see the hand of God in everything he matters, you will understand that that person has been involving God in all those things. Do you know that God is reluctant to involve himself in what you don't want to involve him in, in, in him. But God will involve himself in what you involve him in. He will gladly do that. Look at what happened to Adam. The wife came to him and told him to eat what God said is not eat. He did not involve God. And God was standing. I won't concern with myself with what does not concern me. Not English. Don't be using the English. I used to. I use this English to preach. I will involve myself, myself, with what they do not want to involve me in. Oh in that sort of a lot of talk we see. You do not call him in into that matter. So that means you can do it on your own. So when you involve God in everything you do, you will see signs in everything you do. As a result. God will begin to work on your problems with his mighty power because you have involved it. And at times we pray. And when we pray, we expect instant response in our prayers. And we don't get this intense response. And this problem starts overwhelming us. And at times it overwhelms us that we'll be thinking, God, where is your face? But when we read Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2, Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2, said, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Brethren, there will be situation when your heart will be overwhelmed. And in that situation, people will be making suggestions to you. People will be telling you to go to places where you ought not to go. You will even be doing, you will even be forced to do things you are not forced to do. But my prayer is this, that when we have situation like this, God will lead us to the rock that is higher than us. Now, I don't know what you have gone through. That situation that is uh, 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 oppressing you. That is situation that is uh, uh, um, overwhelming you. But I, when you have this word 
in your heart. That my heart, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that is higher than me. That's why we are going to stand up now. We are going to pray. You are going to pray that God, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In the name of Jesus. I don't know the situation you are going through now. Say, God, lead me to the rock. To the rock that is higher than I. That recally, when, when discouragement set in, when discouragement set in, my heart is overwhelmed. People start suggesting things to me. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than you. In the name of Jesus. Every situation that is overwhelming my heart. Father, I pray. Hey, hey, rebuke, rebuke, rebuke this correctness from my life. Let me be led to the rock that is higher than me. Whichever other way that the people are pointing to me. Father, I pray I will not go that way. I will go towards the rock that is higher than me. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen my heart so that I can walk towards the rock that is higher than me. And Father and our God, we pray that as your people have raised up their voices, that when they, were over, they are overwhelmed by problem, let them be led to the rock that is higher than them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can we see that? You know, when I ask you to pray, you should pray. The reason God gave us mouth is that we'll be able to speak. If God does not want us to be praying out, he will not give us mouth to pray. So, use your mouth to pray. And it's very crucial. Because I see people, they just have them. You know, people that do the thing, when you don't have problems, they will force you to pray. You know, when you have problems, you'll be praying when they don't ask you to pray. And I don't want you to to be praying because you are not praying. That will not be your portion. Okay. When we get okay, when we don't get what we want, at times we think that after praying, we think that God has abandoned us. God answers prayers. Prayers that are and in agreement with his will. His always are not, his answers are not always yes, but are, but are always in our interest. I said, God will answer prayers that are in agreement with his will. His answers are not always yes, but are always in our interest. That means at times if God said no for now, it is in our interest that he's saying so. Because he has seen the bigger picture. When our desires line up with his will, it will come to, we will come to understand in time why God was delaying the answer. Psalm 5, verse 11. That in spite of what you think you are seeing after praying, and you think that you are praying right, you should trust God. You should trust God. Because when you trust God, and when you pray, and at that time you are not even seeing results, and you don't know why the result is not coming, you should keep on trusting God. Because there was a man called Daniel that was praying. He did not know even that the devil has blocked his prayer. But he kept on trusting God. He kept on trusting God. And at the end of the day, God located, and it was then he was able to see the big picture. Why the prayer was delayed. He didn't even know the prayer was delayed. He was just thinking that the God is here to answer him. Not knowing that God has answered him, there was certain interruption in the, in, in, in the spirit realm. But he kept on, because he believed in God. So, we need to talk. So, Psalm 5, verse 11 says, But let all those who rejoice, who put trust in you, let them shout for joy because you defend them. 
Let those who love your name be joyful to you. That when you, when you, when you trust God, it doesn't matter what you are seeing as you pray. At the end of the day, you will rejoice. Jesus, the Lord is Jesus is the only God that you can rely upon, upon to, in any situation. And as you are going through the situation and things that anything and things are not working right. But because it's a friend that you can trust, you will see that it will end in praise in the name of Jesus. There's a song that says, Rebi Jesu Kosila. Jesu Nikolore Otito. Rejoice who put their trust in the Lord. <laughs> when you put your trust in the Lord, even when you are not seeing answer to your prayer, he said, Rejoice. Because already Jesus, Jesus will not forget you. I don't know what you are going through. I want you to pray now again. That you start rejoicing. That Jesus, I know you have not forgotten me. He said, Let those who put their trust in God rejoice. Because God has not forgotten your, you as you pray to him. He has not forgotten your prayer. As you rejoice, you will start seeing the manifestation of that where you are believing God for. He said, rejoice. Let those who rejoice put their trust in the Lord. Lord, I put their trust in me. When Hannah prayed, he prayed she prayed to a certain dimension. And she started rejoicing. She started rejoicing. And you see, God answered her. She was praying before and she was gloomy. She was sad. She will go back home sad. But there was a day she went to Shiloh, she prayed. And she rose up. And she started rejoicing. And the, all her years of waiting came to an end. As you pray today, rejoicing in the Lord. Despite what you are seeing, your time of rejoicing shall come in the name of Jesus. Psalm 9 verse 10. He said, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not spoken to, uh, you are not forsaking those who seek you. And to those who know your name, we, we put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. You are going to stand up on the exactly of this word. I don't know whether you have been believing God for. God has not forsaken you. And you are going to remind him the power in this, activate the power in this world. That God, you have not forsaken those who seek you. I want you to start talking to God. God he said, God will not forsake you. I don't know how difficult you think that thing is. He said, He has not forsaken those who seek him. Raise up, God, raise up to God. Raise up your voice to God. Some of you may be even be asking for what you believe God in. He said, those who seek him, he will not forsake him. Concerning your life, concerning the ministry God has committed into your hands, concerning your children. I want you to call upon him. In Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 18 verse 2. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I want you to pray this into your life. That God is your rock, your fortress and your deliverer. He's going to deliver you from every attack of the enemy. He said, my God, my strength. It's going to be your strength. Your, your strength. You will trust him. 
It will be your shield, the horn of your salvation. God will be your stronghold. You see, I, I, I want you to pray like you, 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 you are a prayer person. I want that fire of prayer to ignite in you. God, continue to be my strength. Because you are my strength, you are my shield. You are the horn of my salvation. You are my stronghold. That will be my portion in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are going to use Psalm 20, verse 7 to pray. It says, some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will, rename the name, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. You are going to rise up now. You are going to pray that though some trust in charity or some in horses, but I remember the name of my Lord God. All the, every problem, he, the Egyptians confronting me, every principality, because I invoke the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bow down. I don't know what has been coming against you. Coming against your business. Standing against your progress. As you remember the name of the Lord your God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They are saved. I want you to invoke the name of the Lord your God. Against every power. Against principalities. Against forces that are hindering expansion of international headquarters with the name of the law. They may trust in chariot, they may trust in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God and we invoke that name now, the name of Jehovah in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let, they bow down and they are falling, but we have risen and stand upright by the power that's in the name of Jesus. Rika le mason in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now we're going to use this Psalm 25. And I want them to project it. Because we're going to use it to pray. And we're going to use it to, we are going to sing that Psalm 25, 1 and 2. Um, if you have it in KJV, you can put it there. KJV, Psalm 25, 1 and 2. KJV. <laughs> Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Mm, unto thee, unto, unto thee, thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Next verse. Oh, oh my God. God. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Unto thee, O God. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Unto thee, O Lord. Oh Lord. Do I lift up my soul, oh my Lord, oh my God, oh. I trust in you, let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over Do I lift up my soul unto the Lord? Do I lift up my soul? Oh my God! Oh my God! I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph. Now this you are going to do a prayer warfare. 
uh, uh, warfare prayer now. You are going to activate the power in that word. You are going to pray that God, unto you as I lift up my soul, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemy triumph over me. Whatever way the enemy is confronting you, go into warfare prayer. Mangrima, is it financially the enemy is holding you down? That wants to disgrace you so that you'll be begging for bread. With the power of prayer now, start tearing those things down. Every stronghold, stopping your progress. Pull them down in the name of Jesus. It will not be you to make you ashamed. Anything that the enemy is doing to make you ashamed, activate the power in this world that your enemy will not triumph over you. In the name of Jesus, you lift up your voice. Father, we'll pray even for Christ, Mijal Akata, that we will not be ashamed. The enemy will not try over us. Every force of darkness that is hindering the progress of this church, Lord, neutralize them in the name of Jesus. Every barrier that the enemy has built around this place for this church not to go, let them collapse from foundation, destroy the foundation of those things and pull them down in the name of Jesus. As many of our members that are going through stuff, crisis in their health, in their job, in their family. Father, step in. Step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Have your way. Maroka, they are students that are having problems with their educational pursuit. Lord, help them. Give them wisdom. Knowledge and understanding. Send helper that will help them concerning their school fees. In the name of Jesus. Workers that are working, promotion, promotion, promotion. Grant their promotion. Businessmen, Father, bless their businesses. In the name of Jesus. People that are looking for work. Good job, good job, good job. Good businesses. Grant unto them in Jesus' name. People that are sick in their body. Deliverance from sickness, from infirmity in Jesus' name. People that are believing for children. Lord, wonderful children. Release unto them in Jesus' name. Heal your people. Give us joy. People that are giving for you for resources. They are believing for money, for houses, for cars, for things that will make life easy for them. Lord, release. Lord, release. Lord, release. In the name of Jesus. Pray for this church. Christ Media Assembly, International Headquarters, it shall go, it will show. God will use us to save more lives. We will save them in their thousands, in their millions, in the name of Jesus. Pray for Christ Media Assembly all over the world that we will be shining the light of the gospel. We will be shining the light of God. Our light, we will shine the light of God. The name of Jesus will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. You are not going to pray against spirit of slumberness. That will be attacking your prayer life. Because if they, that's what they can do to, to, to even demobilize you. And that's why you pray. Every force working against your prayer life. With the name of Jesus. That the heavens to destroy every of their power in Jesus name. To neutralize every force that will be working against your prayer. Every strategy that the enemy will be using. To work against your prayer life. So that you cannot pray. Let those strategies of the enemy be confounded. Be, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Whatever people may be. To weaken you spiritually. Today destroy their base. Destroy their base. Destroy their base. Payeke lere kurika handaya, mengre makala ya hurika handaya, mangri kale kahu de moshen kubo kurika hiria, maroka de ye kere kuri handbu, marokuru hose kubo kuru, mai hera mukune hora moshen kubo, mai hera moshen kubo kuri hera moshen kubo, mai hera kubo moshen kubo kuni handbu, pengre mahu de mukuri hera mu, payeke lere kere ye kala rahu de mukuria. My kere re kuri handro mo shengro mo kuri kahiri mo mengre ma kale ye ke kere re kuri ye kere re kala handa ya maro kade ya mengre ma kale ye kude ye kere re kahuri ya mengre ma kuri handro mo shengro mo maro kade ye kere mo kuri handro mo shengro mo ma ye kuro mo shengro mo oro kuri ye dumo hiri mo kuri handro mo shiri mengre ma kade ye kere re kuri Mangro moloro shenk de makande ori hede bo shenk de bo mengre makure ye kubo shenk de makande in Jesus name we pray now Psalm seven verse nine Psalm seven verse nine Psalm seven verse nine you are going to use to pray for yourself the time is okay are we there said oh 
let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just for the righteous test the heart of the mind. Now you are going to pray. You say, Oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end in my life. Oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end in my life. Do you know that there are some wicked people that all they want to do is to see bad things happening to people? And they are even oppressing some people who are the, who are children of God. And that's why I want, if you see that some things are happening in your life, you are not happy with. I want you to pray this prayer with faith. Oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end in my life. In the life of my wife, in the life of my children, in, the, in my ministry, in the work God has come to In the name of Jesus. Every wickedness of the wicked. Let them come to an end in my life. Oh, to get. Iba, no, get, no, ye, me, to get. Ashe, da, no, ye, me, to get. All the wickedness of the wicked. I declare an end to them in the name of Jesus. In my life, in the life of every member of this assembly, in this church, let the wickedness of the wicked upon your children come to an end in the name of Jesus. Everything you are doing, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. My yekal, we declare so. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. So we are going to pray the second part of that place. He said, but establish the jaws for the God, for the righteous God tests the hearts of the man. That God establish me. Establish my family. Everything I've been doing, I could not, I've started it and I could not finish it. Lord, establish me. You start the studies, you could not finish your school, establish me. Things we are not, they we were just unstable. We will rise today, we will rise today, we will tomorrow. That as the wickedness of wicked terminates in my life, Lord, establish me. That you will be able to prosper you in what you are doing. Establish it in the name of Jesus as we terminate the wickedness of the wickedness. Of the wicked upon this Takata assembly and upon Christ in the assembly, Lord, establish this church to the glory of your name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we, hear, hear you, we give you praise. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you today. Because we trust in you, we know you will not make us to be ashamed. You will not allow our enemy to triumph over us. We have prayed this prayer, and we know you have heard it. And as from today, let the people of God start seeing the manifestation of this prayer in their life in the name of Jesus. Every wickedness you have put is stopping. So, they shall not arise again in the name of Jesus. You will rejoice. Sound of joy and rejoicing will be heard in your life because you trust in the Lord. Your trust in God shall not be in vain. Kata, CIA, you will rejoice. The work God has given you, you will accomplish. Every force rising against this force or against this church, they are, dis, they are dismantled, they are dissolved, and they are destroyed in Jesus' name. God be glorified forever. Thank you, faithful Father, that we will rejoice. We will rejoice. Say, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Because the Lord has answered my prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. O batum bo adura o go yeah